the story so far. Before you know it, waves overwhelm the viola. I'm going to try and use the compass and the position of the mountain to roughly gauge where we are and where we would need to go to get to the other camp. One year ago, four colleagues of yours were working aboard the cruise ship Prospero. When the ship sank, they were washed up on a remote island. I want to go and get some honey. Those bees aggressively defend their territory. What? They burst out, surround you. The bees! <laughs> you collapse into the scrubland. They were washed up on a remote island. Three of the four came back. Light again, the world's a stage, and we're all merely players. A new day dawns on the island. Uh, those of you that were still asleep uh, wake up with the dawn. Um, it is a, it's not drizzling yet, but it is still a grey day. Grey with like dark clouds on the horizon and it looks very possible uh, that it'll be uh, stormy or, or rainy again later. Um, your fire has, has burned down, your firewood is gone. But it kept you all warm throughout the night. Stomachs are starting to rumble. Uh, your mouths are starting to get dry, especially those of you that breathe in a lot of seawater in the wreck. It's looking grey. Alex, uh, yep. how are you feeling about the weather today? I think it's probably most likely going to rain at some point in the next couple of hours, or maybe sooner. But it doesn't look like it's going to be very heavy. So could okay. we... Could we make something that'll catch yeah. that rain to drink because yeah. I'm quite thirsty you know, let's catch okay. that rainwater if we can take advantage mm -hmm. of it I've got this idea I don't know where the idea came from but for cups yeah we could, we could see right. if we could yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we can I think I think yeah we do need to find something like that holds water that we can carry it around with us and that would be really great mm -hmm. we're on a beach right yeah can we scavenge at all is there is there like human detritus washed up don't know. Maybe from our boat. Yeah, yeah. is that possible? You'd have to do a bit of exploring. We to could do that. Find yeah. That. Yeah. Like, what? What does everyone think we should do today? I mean, you. I can tell us. We're. I can. We're roughly at this point on the island, so we'd need to head that way. I'm going to gesture okay. with my finger inland, yeah. away from okay. the beach to get to kind of our last thought of location for the. Yeah. How okay. do you have any concept of how far we are? Is it's, it a day? Could we do it in a day? Or do I we don't. Need to... I wouldn't. Yeah. Yes, we can do that. Um, judging from the size of the map that the others drew and how big I've drawn my map, I think <laughs> a scale. it would take about one day of hiking to get there. Okay. Maybe to, less. To either get ourselves prepared now and we head off, or we try and get stuff together here and then go tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I don't think getting to their camp is a time-sensitive thing. It's not like getting there no. any quicker is going to help with finding Strat. But getting ourselves safe yeah. is more time sensitive. I was right? just thinking, like, if they have things there, something. Oh bad, yeah, that so we will could be... go right. We're not going to bother with getting ourselves set up. We're just going to hope that they've got stuff there. Is an mm. option. That's all okay. I'm saying. Okay. What we don't want to happen is like get halfway there and it get dark and, and get stuck and get yeah. stuck somewhere unsafe. So we've got a big pointy stick. So yes. food could be okay. If we sort out the water situation, I think we could do mm -hmm. kind of a halfway between two plans and kind of make yeah. a. A good enough water solution for yeah. now, mm -hmm. and then just walk with our mouths open to catch the rainwater. Rather than going on like a proper exploratory expedition, can we just scout out the immediate area so it's not going to take too long? We just yeah, just see if there's anything useful to be had. Yeah, yeah totally. Because if we washed or if Dave washed up here, maybe other stuff did too. Yeah, totally. Um, so I think in the course of the night. Uh, you would have sort of just by kind of pacing up and down the beach while on watch, uh, you would have kind of explored. And like maybe there's there's little bits and pieces of like maybe a bit of metal yeah, or like bottom, the, yeah. like the the uh, the corner of a of a fishing net and like a float maybe yeah. mm -hmm. like various mm -hmm. tiny little bits and pieces. Nothing super useful here okay, in terms okay. of salvage, but that does tell you that the 
like you're probably on the right coast for the wreck so yeah. if you mm. wanted to explore for salvage then mm. you that could be something you could try to dive for if that's something you think is a priority mm. while you're thinking about that alex uh, you were predicting some weather mm-hmm. earlier. do you want to roll that move yeah what did we decide that was instinct or intellect uh, it was instinct okie dokie roll instinct that is a it's an eight your prediction holds up. So what what weather are you predicting? Basically, yeah. whatever you predict will happen. You said rain in a yeah, couple of hours. Yeah, rain in a couple of hours. hours. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's going to happen. Okay. okay. If there, if I've just thought about this, if we're looking to collect water, we can is the the little float that you said mm-hmm. was lying around. I think what we could do is um, see if we can cut a hole in it. Uh, sharp rock. Sharp rock. Sharp rock. <laughs> so if we can cut a hole in it and then put some palm fronds there, yep. when it'll it'll catch the rain and it'll feed it into the Perfect. into the thing. Cool. Who'd like to try and bodge that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was rain on the water. Okay. <laughs> Hand you my rock. You've given me some like technical drawings. I've got <laughs> yeah. my materials yeah. laid out, costed and quantified. I'm going for it. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, and bodging. So it's plus intellect for bodging. Nine. Uh, so either it'll work reliably or it'll work straight away. Or somebody can try and help you to boost that up. Anyone want to give I will help. help. Thank you. Could that you hold some fronds? Um, okay, so roll your current morale, Alex. Uh, oh, that's plus two. Yay. Yeah. Great. We're all so happy. Oh, Yay. nice. Oh, 11. 11. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Success. Uh, yeah, you boost that up to a success. Great. Mm. Nice work, mate. So that's first time and reliably. Yes. yes. So it works first time and reliably. And because <gasps> you have a special super bodge. Choose super a, bodge. Choose a bodge. <laughs> choose an extra from these options. Oh my God. It's portable. Wow. It's very robust. It's very powerful. Probably doesn't apply. Yeah. <laughs> the most powerful car. <laughs> it's like sucking your own quality. Or you have enough resources left over to attempt to make another one. It's got to be portable, hasn't it? That's the whole mm-hmm. point we've made it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to rain in two hours, not yeah. now. Yeah. Easily portable, which yeah. I think maybe means that like you can like, strap it on. Yeah. Yeah. Like it has leave a your hands free. Yeah. Can I have a straw? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm so excited. You've made a camel pack. Yeah. Yes. You're amazing. Nice work, Alan. Uh, uh, but, uh, and Alan. And Alan. I came with the Just idea. I'm happy with that. Well, yeah. Alan predicted it's going to rain. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've been, both been crushing it. Woohoo. Great. All right. So you now have a way of collecting water, and mm-hmm. you're pretty sure that it's going to start working in about an hour or so when it starts raining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the plan? I guess we're going to head inland towards the camp. Yeah. Mm. Let's go. Boom. Fantastic. Into uncharted territory. Yes. Um, could I maybe look at the land and kind of predict what we might be coming up against? Absolutely, yeah. You can have a have a think about that based on uh, what you know about what the previous party told you mm-hmm. or, or put in their literature or whatever mm-hmm. and what you've seen. Uh, yes, roll intellect. Uh, that is a seven minus one, that is six. Ooh. Is that a fail? Six. Six, yes. Yeah, unless someone wants to help. I might, I might. I might. <laughs> yeah. how, how do you help? So I think I just like spot something that Dave's missed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I go, oh, what about that over there? And he's like, oh, yes. Good good, good spotting. Okay. So that doesn't, that doesn't sound like how I would react to that situation. I think I would say, no, no, silly woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how our entire relationship operates. So plus two for your current morale, yep. minus one because you're getting hangry. I am hungry. Mm. Okay. Do I get my element? For this, no, just my morale. Because so you're all together. together. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you do. So okay, so it cancels, cancels out the hangriness, so at least. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. Uh, either you boost his result, but you expose yourself to some form of danger, mm. or you keep yourself safe and can't help. I'm going to help and expose myself to danger, and I have an idea for what that danger could be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I have a bit of a reputation, especially if we're like maybe we've like scrambled up a little hill or something to try and see around a bit of reputation of falling over in these situations so I think I'm going to fall over great okay we've got various things to resolve Dave Mm -hmm. uh, you're now on a full success Mm -hmm. which means you get to add something to the map Mm -hmm. anywhere not necessarily just next to where you are and uh, when you get there you will have a plus one to explore there for resources and things okay Ooh, so I'll, I'll add there. something on the map that's in between us and where we're going sure so is this that is something that we see? would walk yeah. through anyway yep. yeah I mean I feel like if this is a mountain there would be rocky plains coming down turning into a forest or perhaps grassland 
Yeah, it's up to you. It doesn't yeah, have to right. necessarily have to make, make sense. It doesn't have to make loads of geographical sense. I would I definitely prioritize cool and interesting over. Well, can I can I put in like a lovely freshwater oasis that we could walk through? Yeah, you can put a lake there if you want. Yeah, a lovely lake. Yeah, a specified lovely, <laughs> lovely <laughs> lake that we're going to bump into with some grass around it. Mm, lovely lake. There we go. All right, there is a freshwater lake. Uh, it might n- not necessarily be safe, but you will have. But it will be lovely. You have a booth to, to I love it. No, he's like, no, no, no. I didn't say it was safe. I said it was lovely. Pedal boats. Yeah. Ducks. Yeah. Maybe. Those swan based pedal boats. Hey, I yeah. kill one of those ducks with my spear and eat it. But as you are surveying the land and realising that this lake must be there, uh, you're, you've gone up a little ridge. Vicky misses her footing while pointing so, while, while the two of you are arguing <laughs> yeah. over yeah. what the two this of you have spotted. This is very, very real, yeah. You miss your footing and you, you find yourself tumbling into a, a kind of a natural dip or pit in yeah. the ground Great. that is going to be difficult to get out of. It's annoying, mm. yeah. Right. right, so you're not harmed by falling into it. No, but, but I you're, am stuck. You're now stuck. Okay. Team base camp at the steamer. Uh, what would you all like to do as dusk begins to fade? Okay. Okay. I would like to let be in the shelter and as they're coming out, come, like suddenly, uh, you know how people like stand on a street lamppost and swing. <laughs> <laughs> I would like going like, welcome, very Gene Kelly, very singing <laughs> yeah, the rain. Yes. Yeah. Still trying to deal with this by being my flamboyant stage self, <laughs> not really taking it quite as seriously as I should be yet. This is my coping mechanism. <laughs> Showmanship. Mm-hmm. That's... Ta-da! That's actually amazing. You built that? Yes. All of it? Yes. In the time it took for us to explore that ship, yeah. he has built this. I'm the... sure you've found plenty of useful supplies. <gasps> Not supplies. Well, then sh- show equipment. Him. Show him. Food. A skull. Yeah. Look at the Big back skull. Of... Look, Look at the back of it. Look at the back of it. A broken skull. A murdered skull. Someone, there's a murderer here. Okay. Mur- okay. Murder skull. Strat, there is a shudder at yeah. the back of your mind. <laughs> and uh, you you see uh, uh, almost like a like a uh, memory, but like a like a secondhand memory. Like it's a memory of a, an, an anecdote someone told you, or a memory of a film you once saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see the butt of a flintlock pistol slamming into the side of a man's head, and his hat flying off. Uh, and then the flash is gone. Someone has has murdered someone on this island. Someone's has evil brutally has murdered someone. beaten this person. Like what? What sort of person crushes somebody's skull no. like that? I don't, it in. I don't think they meant you know there's, it's perfectly likely they didn't mean to they didn't do mean it. to they didn't mean to hammer somebody's skull this person no. is clearly a monster maybe Absolutely. they just wanted to we need to find this person no. we need to bring him to justice <laughs> yes. that's what we need to do we can make our own laws here and I think the hanging should be for the, you know for this person this murderer <laughs> I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. We are. Yeah, you found a skull on a boat, and I, I, you know, I'm sure it's awesome. We just think we need to like drink something yes. and get off yes. this island. Uh, we found a radio. Does it work? Oh, and I, and I made a bandana, but we found a radio. Does it work? Yeah. Well, my bandana. Yes, you just wrap it around your head. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. No, the radio doesn't work. It's a bit rusty, but it's there. I was so. thinking that you're very, very smart with this, yes. but also that uh, Chris is uh, uh, ancient and he might know how it works. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, he's very good with those sorts of things. Say what you like about him. He went off to to. He said he was going to go and find us something to eat, but um. Well, how long ago was that? I'm not sure. I kind of just was focusing on building this awesome show. Have you seen? Look, look, look. Richard, look. focus, focus. Sorry, sorry, but it's, I mean, usually I'm just building stuff to trick people, but this is going to keep us, like, safe and... But, we can't but, keep Chris safe unless we know where he is. Okay, okay, so okay. focus, okay. He, Bring it in. He went off in that direction. Okay. Over the point in the direction. Hopefully I realise he went in. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah it's, I think you saw him go. Cool. The, the, the sun is kind of decidedly over the other side and it's starting to kind of get dark so I'm going to assume therefore Mm -hmm. that that was east that he went I don't know if that's going to be useful anyway (laughs) (laughs) perhaps we should go and find him how dark is he is it getting quite dark it's still you've still got visibility but you reckon you've maybe got about half an hour of full day can we we need to move some kind of torch 
Um, have, we, have we got firewood yes. and things nearby? That's Josh, it. yes. Wrap your sparkly thing around a stick. We'll set it on fire. No, we need that to signal. No, it's signal, a signal, yeah, and I need to wear it because it's pretty. But we all uh, uh, some some fronds, and I've got the rum, and we can set fire to the rum, and we'll turn it into with. Okay, no, that's uh, fine. Rocks. That's fine. Yeah, rocks on uh, some metal of the ship yes. to create yep. a spark. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, okay, great. Okay, so, uh, take, so we'll dip some of the fronds. Yeah, in, and I pour a liberal amount of rum onto it. Uh, d- not liberal, we want to conserve. Because okay, so I catch the, the, in my mouth and, oh, that's very nice. Conserve and then, as uh, much of the rum. Yes, rubber. absolutely. Yeah. And we try and set fire to it. Yes, by hitting a rock against some of the least rusty metal I can find. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think you can, it might take you a few minutes, but you manage to get a spark just about enough to light this. Clang, clang, <laughs> clang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. if there's anything in the, around in the woods, you're definitely getting its attention. But mm-hmm. yeah, you've lit a torch. Cool. You're not sure how long it'll burn for. Let's go quick. Yeah. Let's go, I'll go quick. Let's stay together. Actually, it's still, it's not, it's, it's still light, so... <sighs> Maybe I'd blow out the torch, <laughs> take a bit of metal or rock with me for when it gets dark, because otherwise this is going we just got fire in the daytime right now. It's true. Okay. But it's good to know that we can do it and that we have it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while, while he's doing that, I think, and as the fire has uh, exploded, I kind of look at it and it lights my eyes up and I, and I think, this is my chance. I can rescue him. And I run off in the direction uh, of where I think Chris has gone to, yelling, Wow, God! Right out <laughs> <into> the bushes. <laughs> I've lost my mind. Is this what every day was like for you, Natalie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, one and all, to Merely Role Players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt, your compare for this performance of Prospero and Viola Act 4. Let's take a quick break to see what's in the programme. You might have noticed by this point in the season that we're making the occasional reference to things that happened in earlier stories. Our aim is still for every season of Merely Role Players to stand alone, so you shouldn't need to know anything about those other seasons we're referencing to enjoy this one. But if you did want to hunt down all the Easter eggs, the main seasons you'd want to listen back to would be Season 3, A Town Called Amnesty, and Season 6, Parallax. Those aren't the only seasons that get little callbacks in this one, but they're probably the most significant. If you're listening in Apple Podcasts, you should be able to sort the episodes by season, or you can follow the links in the episode notes. In a couple of weekends' time, I'll be at Dragon Meet, the one-day tabletop gaming convention in West London. I'll be roaming the convention for most of the day, And then in the evening gaming session, I'll be running a game of Impulse Drive, the space opera game we played in Season 6. If you're going to Dragon Meet and you want to play in that session, just find the sign-up sheet when you arrive at the convention and put your name down. There's more about Dragon Meet and Impulse Drive at the links in the episode notes. Last thing before we lift the curtain again. Some long-time friends of the podcast need us to help them help LeBron James help the Earth survive another basketball-based alien incursion, which some commentators are calling a Space Jam 2. You can follow the hashtag HelpUsHelpLeBron on Twitter to keep track of their efforts, and you can also listen to the podcast dossier they've been compiling to bring Mr. James up to speed on what he's facing. It sounds a bit like this. In a world that appears to make no linear sense, there is a time-travelling rabbit with an important agenda. What is it? No one knows, but it has something to do with basketball. Welcome to a reality where a famous pig actor turned despotic leader rules with an iron fist, and a psychopathic duck may be our only hope for salvation. Welcome to the Tooniverse. The Space Jam Continuum is a show where two brave souls attempt to create a cohesive cinematic universe out of something that was never meant to be one. Looney Tunes, from 1937 all the way to Space Jam. Why? Because in an era where all people want is a cinematic universe and reboots of all cartoons, we're the only ones with a resolve to combine the two. So join us every Wednesday as we explore the depths of the Tooniverse, slowly clawing our way ever closer to the 1996 classic. That's the Space Jam Continuum, every Wednesday at kaiju.fm or wherever you listen to podcasts. Oh, and we advise you start at the beginning. It's a good idea.
Let's all stay together, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when Josh runs off into the trees, uh, what do the two remaining survivors do? I, I probably start with Josh. Josh. Joshua. I'm coming for you, Grim. You come back, you <laughs> you come back here right now. Oh, it. Okay. I think we just let's, let's, reside let's, following yeah. him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Nat, you can follow tracks. Yes. Would you like to do that? I would like to do that, yes, please. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was a... We knew he was going that direction and we'd hit the scrubland. You, you'll you definitely, first, like, or... reach the same area, but if you if you roll well on this, then you will have a better idea of actually where he is, because it's long grass, which might be difficult to find. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is a nine. I, I guess we can yeah. find our way back. Yeah, like, okay. We know positionally yeah. where we are mm, relative nice. to the camp. Yeah, this is kind of a low-stakes thing, because it's not like you're tracking a wild animal that might turn on you. Uh, yes, you managed to follow... Don't the... underestimate me. <laughs> <laughs> so wild. <laughs> Yes. You manage to follow the, the marks in the woodland of both the parallel tracks of uh, Starkey's uh, reasonably measured steps <laughs> and the crashed, like, broken branches <laughs> and trampled undergrowth of Josh's path. Okay. Uh, and so, Josh, you burst into the scrubland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you see, I mean, you see the terrain, you see that this is kind of long long grass, maybe like waist-length grass, and a few trees dotted about, mm-hmm. but uh, because you're sort of running headlong, uh, you don't necessarily see the same kind of level of detail that Starkey mm-hmm. did, so yep. you don't necessarily see the game animals mm-hmm. or the beehives, yep. uh, and you don't currently, at least, uh, see Starkey himself. Okay. You may be here faintly echoing in the wind the sound of the bee. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I think you can have heard as you're crashing through the through the woods a, a faint cry of the bee. <laughs> okay, um, but for now the scrubland is quiet and still. Mm. So I'm breathing rather heavily. <sighs> I kind of look around to take, bring in my senses, and I kind of get the impression that it's a combination of uh, the trauma from the, the ship. <laughs> being wrecked and the adrenaline that's still coursing through my veins a bit of the rum <laughs> being freaked out by the disappearing ship that I've kind of gone a bit primal and my, my vision is sort of fish-eyed a little bit and I'm kind of a little bit far cry a little bit <laughs> a little bit otherworldly at the moment and I kind of look around the floor and I see is there anything is there a large stick or anything that I can use as a, as a, as a club uh, yeah there are some large sticks around yeah okay so I'm just I'm just going to grab one of those and just kind of uh, <laughs> assume a defensive position scouring the grasslands Nat and Strat, following the two sets of tracks, you emerge into the scrubland. Uh, you can see uh, above the level of the grass, you can see uh, Josh uh, a few hundred yards ahead of you, brandishing a big stick, <laughs> stalking seemingly quite aimlessly and aggressively through the scrubland. <laughs> um, but you can see the pattern of crushed grass that leads to where Starkey went in this terrain. Josh? <laughs> I turn and look at them. You, yes. You okay, Han? I think I might be a bit sun, sunburned. Okay, okay. okay. Like, hold, hold his hand in a teacher, teacher-like fashion. Okay. And I sort of drag, drag the club why along the floor as I do. Why don't we follow these grass marks here? Because that looks like a very fresh human did that. Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay. I drop, drop good hand. boy. <laughs> you keep your stick, though. That's a good idea. This is my stick. Yes, it is. There are many sticks like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stroke the stick. <laughs> oh, God. The stick will have a name. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Steve. not long after you start following the trail that you, before you stumble upon, uh, prone, face down in the scrub, the figure of Starkey. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I, I, I run over and I, uh, well, I, mean, I can see Star- that he's covered in bee stings, yeah. right? I don't you can see the bee stings. Starkey, like you're, you are conscious, you're just not able to, like, do much. Jeez. <laughs> are there bees still around? Uh, they are, you can see, now that you've seen that he's covered in bee stings and you know that to look out for bees, you can see that there is a point over sort of between here and the nearest tree there is a point where a bunch of bees are swarming which seems to be where he dropped that hive okay uh, i'm gonna roll to see if i know how to fix him sure <laughs> this is plus I do not. Oh. plus intellect so you're on a four currently does anyone want to help we can't, uh, help, we can't help you, help you. Six. Um, it's 
bee you, sting. <laughs> you, Nat, as somebody who works with children, you've seen some bee stings. Yeah. This is a lot of bee stings. Yeah. Um, and you know how to deal with bee stings, but this is bad. This is a large number of them, and he seems to be reacting badly to them. You can see... Uh, redness spreading from the site of each sting and he seems to be having trouble breathing as his neck is swollen and coming up against his uh, dicky bow uh, okay. we undo the dicky bow the the loosen the dicky bow <laughs> loosen the dicky <laughs> okay let's, let's get you sat up that's it okay breathe, breathe slowly for me Starkey quicker than not, that not that <laughs> okay. not that Deep. <gasps> the bees get the honey. <laughs> There's a nice idea we could all do with a little bit of treat, but let's leave the honey, honey with them. Well, well, the honey is pretty antiseptic, so actually, it's probably a good idea to have it. Honey, oh, shall I go and get some honey? I've got my stick now. <laughs> don't I don't like that look in your eyes. Your stick. No. No. Okay, fine. Could you, you magic the bees? <laughs> What what I do is literally smoke and mirrors. <laughs> and sometimes He's not like smoke. and I reach out to Josh and go, What's behind your ear? And I've got a small rock. That's for you. How did you do that? You know. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and I do a little tap move and thank you. <laughs> in your and, bare feet. In your bare feet. <laughs> Impressive work, um, but it, it, it also, do, is the honey going to be useful though? Well, yeah, and she said we can put it on his bee stings. Okay, I the rum isn't going to be. Could we use the rum instead? Well, yes, but you know, more resources is better. <laughs> True, but I just don't want to become him. <laughs> um, I, 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 I could go and smash the hive, and then they'll life. chase me, and then you can run in and get the honey. And what are you going to do? How are you going to run stop? really, really quickly? Try and find a pool of water that I could dive into and maybe I'd follow me. That sounds like a good idea, but <laughs> maybe maybe you ought to be the, the, the sneaking up and getting the honey and perhaps somebody with a calmer head right now could do the evading. Because I'm not saying you're acting rashly, but you're acting no, I'm really a, bloody rashly. I'm acting rashly. Yeah, so yeah. how about... I distract the bees somehow. Using your magic. Using, yeah, yeah, go right, yeah, my magic. <laughs> and then you attempt to get the honey. Gotcha. Okay. Loosening Starkey's tie seems to have helped <gasps> temporarily, but he seen, his condition seems to be deteriorating. <gasps> the, the, the swelling doesn't seem to be getting any better. Okay. Uh, and you you feel like you you are going to need to do something about yeah. this relatively quickly. Clive, I'm coming. No, <laughs> no. Okay, um, let's give him a swig of rum just for now, anyway. Um, okay. Yeah. Like we we literally we have no chug, food. Chug, 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 chug. We have no food, no water, or anything right now. So the best uh, I can do is are get back to camp. Stingers sticking in him still. Uh, yes. Maybe we should try and uh, yeah. get those out. If there's any, if it's yeah. still pumping poison mm. from the stingers in, maybe we should at least try and get those mm. out of him. So you guys go get honey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna dip my fingers in rum to mm-hmm. sterilize, yeah. and then I will attempt to do this. <laughs> you guys go get honey. <laughs> okay. So you're you're gonna go up. Let's go through the plan again one more time. Yes. yes you're yes. gonna go up and upset uh-huh. the bees. Yes. Using your fire. Yes. You're going to run away so they follow you. Yes. And I'm going to go up and scoop out a load of honey with my hand. Sure. Well, maybe I I don't have to do the running. Maybe I can just do the smoke to try and keep them away. <sighs> and, I, and then you get the honey while I'm doing that. So I don't have to... You, I focus on bees. Mm. You focus on the honey. Then we both book it. Done. Okay. This could only go well. I can't think of a better plan. <laughs> All this for a bit of honey. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stupid man. <laughs> It sounds like a smart plan to try and drive the danger away rather than like a, a spur of the moment instinctual plan to try and uh, like evade it. So mm-hmm. this is an intellect roll from you, please, Strat. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, can I help or am I focused on my own task? So 
Nine gives me you avoid the danger for now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seems like all you really need. Yeah, exactly. We yeah we don't, don't need to make this a completely safe place. We just need to get in and out and then leave them leave them be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Minus two. <laughs> so what what does this look like as you temporarily drive the bees away? Um, uh, I, right, there's there's a there's a part of my act which is like set in some sort of like uh, really like kitsch stupid Egypt, uh, Egyptian tomb where it's got a, like a mummy sarcophagus that I get somebody to go into and I like there's a, like, a big kind of build up with me kind of with a, a fake stage torch to sort of distract people from the stuff going on and pyrotechnics going on there so I essentially just like go into automatic fire and recreate the movements <laughs> I do during that trick but with a real torch <laughs> with all the dialogue as well <laughs> as I just go more into what I feel safe doing which is my performance <laughs> what is the dialogue strap? so it's going to be uh, one sweep goddess Ra hear my call and then another sweep <laughs> and then uh, grant your child the power and then another sweep of Resurrection, and what's actually happening is a mummy in there, and then it's going to be a real person in one. Of the, I'm going to switch a mummy with a real person, uh, and on the resurrection thing, I like do the final sweep, and then I just turn to Josh and go. Run, 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 run. I'll get the honey first, but then yeah. A breeze is starting to pick up, and it helps you by wafting the cloud of smoke that you're nice. creating, sweeping this thing around Good. through the beehive uh, and the swarm of bees still very angry start to avoid the smoke and fly off uh, possibly in search of somewhere to come to a rest for a bit you f- figure they'll be back to the hive before long but you've got the you successfully drive them off long enough for Josh to gather some honey. Nice work, yeah so How, it's not the whole hive, just some honey. Some honey. So I like I pile as much of it into my pockets as I can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to yeah. pull as much of it. Because they didn't bring a receptacle. Yeah. So, so are you are you grabbing like um, like honeycomb mm. rather than? Yeah. I'm assuming mm. it's honeycomb yeah. rather than like filling your hand cupped hands with liquid honey. You think that, but my original thought was cups. <laughs> so uh, uh, no, I will grab as much honeycomb yeah. as so I there's, can do. There's, w- there's still one or two or three like lethargic bees. In yeah. the in the honeycombs, uh-huh. but you manage to get like an armful of honeycomb yeah. out of this hive. Nice. Okay. And I, I, actually, oh, wow. I will stick my hand forward and grab just a handful of honey, yeah. Winnie the Pooh style, yeah. and sort of <laughs> smear it in my gob, <laughs> waste not one not. Okay, so you have a supply of honeycomb now. Uh, Nat, yes. uh, you have been meticulously picking yes. stings out of Starkey. Yep. But he uh, he still needs more care before he can be recovered. This isn't quite enough. Yeah. You're successfully causing, like, making sure that no more venom goes in. Uh, but what is already in his bloodstream seems to be doing uh, a nasty job at the moment. Can I attempt to lift the fog? You certainly can. I'm going to try and lift the fog. So that's means I'm going to try and cure my injury mm. through the power... A song. <laughs> no, I start humming a song in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because your throat isn't really exactly. up to it at the moment. Mm-hmm. Ooh, nice. ten. Mm. You shake off the condition <laughs> and gain one morale. <laughs> Yay! Yay! You are back in action. I don't need your. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm back. I'm back. I can sing. I can sing! Oh, I'm back, everyone. I'm oh, back. good. <laughs> oh, you got the honey. Oh, well done. Do you want some? Did you get the other hive? There's another hive? Yes, one over there. Okay, I think... We can keep some bees, I this thought. This is going to do for now, and I think we ought to maybe head back to camp and make a fire. You should see the shelter he's built. It's amazing. It incredible. Oh. Have we found any water yet? Um, no, that's... No. I thought when you said... We'll deal with later. Mm. Yes. Shelter was what he was doing. Supplies was us, and you were going to find water. Well, I yes. Well, I found some bees. Honey is liquid. It is. Mm-hmm. It's better mm-hmm. than nothing. What's the light situation like? It's nearly dark now. Okay, we should do this tomorrow. But tomorrow we have to find water. Yes. Or else we are not going to last very long. Yes. No, let's do it. As we're walking back, can we just keep an ear out for the sound of running water, potentially, if there's any mm, yeah. near us? 
Uh, you, uh, uh, you've you been through this bit of forest already and kept been keeping an ear out and there is no sound of that uh, within a shot. Did, did we see any trees that might perhaps have coconuts or anything like that? Mm, that's, that's just about possible. Um, you would need to spend some time exploring looking for them. Okay. Maybe we uh, could look the... around our camp for them. Yeah. On our, on our mm-hmm. way back, keeping yeah. an eye out. We could set up like a, a watch overnight if people wanted to take like shifts. Yeah. And in that time, have a look. Not yeah, straight too far. Yeah, I don't no, think yeah. we want to stray outside. I don't want to stray outside. I like my mm-hmm. house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. So uh, in bet- between uh, the journey back to shelter and the taking watches throughout the night, I just want one person to roll for this. Really, uh, somebody uh, roll uh, instinct to look for water in the surrounding woods. Who's a plus one? You. No. Am I only plus one? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You, the most wilderness savvy <laughs> of all of us. Uh, so why? Looking for coconuts. Yeah. I'm looking for coconuts, aren't I? Mm-hmm. Oh no, that's a four or five fail. I-, I think it would be logical if you want to argue it that you would have st- set a rule that nobody goes off on their own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can be with him if you want, or Josh can use his get there in the nick of time thing. Mm-hmm. Would, would that because be... currently the outcome of that is your your exploring in the woods is going to put you in immediate danger. Oh god! Oh, oh Christ! No. Almost. Um, would would we be rolling Safe. with one of our main stats? It would be would morale to help. Oh, okay. So you got yeah. plus two. To I've morale. got plus two to morale. Okay. I will roll to help. Okay. So were you with him? Then were you? Yeah. Going around in a pair. Nice. Oh, no, You're not going to leave me by myself. Immediate danger. <laughs> Both of the eyes oh. happens, but yeah. here we go. <clears throat> well, that's where the danger is. Yep. Yeah. Roll high. Nice. That is a 9, 10, 11. Oh, yes. yes. All right. Uh, so, Starkey, you take plus two. Guys, that makes it a seven. So, choose one. Either you find water in the form of coconuts or a stream or whatever mm-hmm. uh, but I'm going to give you a danger you have to overcome before you can get it mm-hmm. uh, or you find a mystery instead I want to find some coconuts <laughs> yep. and we're going to face the danger alrighty as you have been exploring the wind has been picking up the wind that initially helped you out by blowing that smoke where you needed it to go uh, but generally the, the wind has been getting the, like the weather has been getting wilder as the sun goes down um, and as the two of you reach kind of the end of your patrol route and are just turning back, the first thing that happens is that you spot a stand of coconut trees. <gasps> Natalie, coconuts! Aha! Uh, but also, it begins to absolutely lash with rain, and it's so sudden. Water! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Open my mouth, tilt head to sky. <laughs> So it begins to lash down. It's it's instantaneous. It's like it was dry and windy, and suddenly the rain is being driven in your faces. Are we on um, a hill? It's too uh, tropical storm. You are. You are. You're not too far above sea level. You haven't. You haven't climbed too far. Uh, but there are slopes, and you are sort of reasonably near the base of one. And you hear and turn around and see just about through the dark, lit by a flash of lightning, uh, up a nearby slope. Uh, you can see that the rain has initiated a mudslide. Oh, no. Climb a tree, climb a tree, climb a tree, yeah, climb a tree, yeah, climb a tree. Yeah, yeah. tree. Grab the nearest tree. Uh, and we start. <laughs> start to climb. Start to climb. Okay, both roll instinct. Uh, seven. Seven. Okay, uh, you can either prevent one harm to someone or get someone out of harm's way. That someone can be you. Um, I get myself out of harm's way. I've only got one yeah. life left. So I'm going to get myself out of harm's way. Okay, so you manage to get up to the top of these coconut trees, and you're like, you've got this, uh, you've got the coconuts that were your goal right in front of you, uh, but you can't currently get them anywhere as uh, the ground turns into into a muddy slurry. You've been listening to Merely Role Players. In this season, Vicky, Dave, Ellen, Alex, Nat, Strat, Starkey, and Josh all play themselves, sort of, in a game designed and run by Matt. Like most of our games, this one's powered by the Apocalypse. You can find more games in this genre at apocalypse-world.com/pbta. If you enjoy the program. Let us know with a review or rating on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, 
Listen Notes, or wherever you do your listening. You can also find us on Twitter at Merely Roleplay and at facebook.com slash Merely Roleplayers. Merely Roleplayers is an independent production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Join us for more drama next episode.